our Lord Here to worship Worship you with our hearts wide open Hi, I'm your host, Reggie Coates. And welcome to this series called Worship Leading Insights, where experienced worship leaders from around the San Francisco Bay Area and from around the nation have shared with the high school worship team at Valley Christian School in San Jose, California. And I hope that these insights inspire and encourage you as well. Today's Worship Leading Insights are by Bob Coughlin, who has a wealth of wisdom on worship through many years of experience. He's the director of Sovereign Grace Music and has written three books, one I've used a lot throughout the years called Worship Matters, and another one more recent is called True Worshippers for the Congregation, and then for piano players there's one, it's a course book called Worship Piano. And he'll tell a little bit about himself, um, but let's dive in and hear what he has to say. Uh, my little journey, I, you know, I was raised as a Catholic, actually, and was going to become a priest. I didn't, and uh, became a Christian when I was uh, freshman, 17 years old, freshman in college. And uh, music's been a part of my life, all my life, since I was eight years old. Played piano, majored in piano. I was part of a Christian band called Glad for eight years in the late 70s, early 80s, and I've been doing music all the time since then. And, uh, you know, what... It, because I've just had this little slice of time to give to you. The, the uh, thing that I've been toying around with the last couple of years is uh, this just this little phrase, music is great, Jesus is greater. Um, and that means something if you're a, well, it means something no matter who you are, but if you're a musician, it's especially important that like you realize that's the reality. Do you all love music? I would assume you do. Uh, you know, have hundreds of hours uh, on your iTunes or Spotify or whatever, you know, you listen to. You, you just, how many of you go to music for comfort? Like when you want to, yeah, you, you just want to feel better about life. And I imagine, you know, you have this like playlist with certain artists and groups that you go to. They just make you feel better about yourself. I listen to the paper kites. Does anybody know the paper kites? Paper kites. Paper kites can make me feel nostalgic at times. They can make me feel, you know, good. They can make me feel relaxed. But not like Jesus can. And if I don't know the difference, <laughs> I'm going to be in big trouble. Um, you know, a number of artists have talked about how music you know, change their life. Music is their religion. Um, uh, different, yeah, just different artists have said things like that. Music is their God. No one, usually no one says something like that, but that's what they're saying. You know, music has this force, this power that can change your life. And uh, I want to encourage you, don't believe it. Uh, you know, music's this emotional language that, that speaks to everybody throughout the world. And it's pretty powerful. It's like, it can almost be like a drug. You know, you can get addicted to it. You, you want to shut the word out, you just turn on your music. Uh, you you want to uh, be liked by your friends. You just find out what music they like and you start liking that music. Um, it's very, it can be very controlling. It can be like a sedative, just kind of block everything out. Um, Jesus actually came like to save us. Music's not a savior. Jesus is a savior. And when you bring music into the church, those two can be confused. Um, and I, I would say that music was probably something loved, like a God to me for a long time. And I just loved it. I just listened to all kinds of music, jazz, pop, rap, not too much rap, but enough. Um, country, uh, classical, folk, just everything. And um, just really enjoy it. I mean, I think I have 100 days of music on my iTunes <laughs> um, that's a long time. So I like music, but music is not my God. And, um, you know, if I was, I mean, I had this opportunity with you guys, I would say, enjoy your music, but get to know the one who like created it. Get to know the one who created the melodies, get to know the one who created the harmonies. Mm. Um, 
and use music for his glory. Because that's what every gift is for. So every gift we have, you know, whether it be the sun, whether it be the, the home we're living in, whether it be family, whether it be friends, whether it be food, every gift we have is meant to point back to the giver. It's meant to create fresh affection, not only for the gift, but for the one who gave it to us. A number of years ago, I gave my wife a, um, a pottery barn table. It's a big table. We have a big family, so she wanted a big table. And I bought it for, for Christmas one year, did it on the sly, you know, stored it at a friend's house in the basement. And on Christmas morning, I, I got it into our living room. So we opened presents in the family room. And so I said, ah, oh, you know, at the end of everything, I said, there's one more thing. So I, I brought her into the living room and she opened her eyes and she saw this table that she had been asking about, never thought she'd get it. I'm sure she never thought that I would actually go to all the trouble to go get the table for her. So when she sees the table, she runs over the table. She starts hugging it and kissing it and just saying, oh, table, I love you. Table, I love you. No, actually, that's not what she did. She turned to me and she hugged me. Didn't even go to the table. She started crying first, which was great. You always want your wife to cry when you give them something. <laughs> in a good way. In a good way. And she started crying and she hugged me. Why? Because I was the one who gave her the table. That's the way gifts are supposed to work. So, like, we can enjoy music a lot, but if we're not enjoying it in a way that points us to the Lord, to the one who made it, then we are really moving into idolatry. We're really moving into that space that says, you know what, music's going to ultimately satisfy me. Music's going to take care of me. Music's going to protect me. And I just want to say, after being a musician for 57 years, 57 years, it doesn't. It's really great. It's a really great gift, but it's not like the giver. And there's probably one other thing I'd say in relation to like music in the church. There's a verse in Colossians 3.16. Do you all know that verse by any chance? Uh, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. You know, it could have said, hey, let musical experiences dwell in you richly, as you sing. It could have said, let the lights dwell in you richly. It could have said, let the, uh, you know, new riffs that you're learning dwell in you richly. richly. Let the, the sound of the pedal board, sounds that it's producing, dwell in you richly. It doesn't say that. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And that word of Christ is the gospel. It's the fact, it's what we're celebrating, you know, this time of year, the fact that the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, took on human flesh, took on, you know, our our skin and bones so that he could live a perfect life, never give in to temptation, so that he could die on the cross as a substitute for us to, to... to receive our punishment, to receive the wrath of God in our place, to receive what we deserve, what we earned on the cross and rise from the dead. That's, that's the word of Christ. And anyone who believes in him, anyone who trusts in him, puts their faith in him, is reconciled to God. They're justified in his sight. They're, they're brought near to God. They're adopted into his family. And, and we have this promise that not only will God sustain us till we die, that when we die, we will experience eternal pleasures at his right hand, Psalm 16. That's the gospel. It's, it's the best news the world has ever heard. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there are a lot of voices competing for your attention right now. Uh, they may be on social media. They may, may be among your friends, maybe in your own head, but you got them from somewhere. <laughs> None of those voices is as important as is the voice of God when he says to you, turn to me and be saved all the ends of the earth for I am God and there's none else. He's the only God. He's the only one we have to reckon with when we die. And Jesus came to make everything right with him. I've been a Christian for 48 years. 
And I can tell you that there is nothing more satisfying, nothing more glorious, nothing more fulfilling, nothing more true than knowing Jesus Christ. And as a musician, that's what I want people to know. When I'm leading congreg a congregation in, uh, you know, stand up and leading them in songs, which I still do in my church, believe it or not. I mean, I'm surrounded by people who are like half my age, you know, one third my age, but I still get to do it because it's, why wouldn't I want to do it? Why wouldn't I want to do that? Why wouldn't I want to, you know, tell people, give people, put words in their mouth that, that say, Jesus is glorious. Jesus is great. Jesus is merciful. He's kind. He's been merciful to me. So I would encourage you to make much of Jesus, whatever you do with your music, whether you use it in the church, whether you use it as an artist, whether you just listen to it, make much of Jesus. Because in the end, all the glory is going to go to him. All the joy is going to come from him. All the peace is going to come from him. All the love is going to come from him. So, so why not make much of him now? So that's what I encourage you to do with your music. I'm not sure how long I've gone on, but uh, you're doing great. I'd be, I don't know if you guys have, I mean, there are like a gazillion ways I could go with this. I mean, that's the thing I wanted to say most. Um, right. Because yeah. the gospel affects everything. Wow. Th that is really awesome. And that right wrapped up in all that are a sense of tips for us um, leading as well, that internally just to keep focused on Jesus and, and the gospel, that good news. Um, are there some things that, um, you know, you've learned along the way as a worship leader that they could kind of keep in mind just some, yeah. uh, some key things? Yep. First thing is about the congregation, not about me. So, you know, we, we step up in front of people. We're so concerned. Oh, am I going to get my bass part right? Oh, I'm going to sing the right part. Oh, I'm going to, you know, play the, the right riff. Well, yeah, it's good to learn those things. It's good to be practicing. It's good to be excellent at what you do. But it's really about getting people to sing loud and sing with faith and sing with understanding. So do you guys use inner monitors or do you use wedges or what? Uh, we have used in-ear monitors, uh, but we've gone back and forth. Uh, okay, okay. Well, yeah. Well, wh whatever you use. Uh, I was going to say, if you use in-ear monitors, it's always good either to leave one out or to have a, a, a congregational microphone where the, you're hearing their sound so you can hear them as you're playing. You know, a lot of people, when they put their monitor mixed together, they put themselves in, maybe like the acoustic guitar, the piano, whatever, and then everything else is out. That's really unhelpful because what it means is when you stop playing, it feels like the bottom drops out. So you tend to play all the time. So make sure that you can hear the congregation, whether you, whether you use wedges or you know, whatever your context is, make sure that you can hear people singing. Because sometimes, you know, have you ever been in a situation where someone's leading and like one fourth of the people in the congregation are even singing? Hmm. That's a performance. That's not leading worship. Hmm. You're just doing a concert for them. That's not what congregational singing is about. You know, God told us to sing for a reason. Because when you sing, it like draws something out of you. It's more than just like sitting there listening. It's, it's, it involves your energy, your breath. It involves your face, your muscles. That's because he's worthy of those things. Of course, he's worthy of much more outside the meeting, but at least when we gather, you know, he's worthy of singing. If you're an instrumentalist, he's worthy of playing, playing well. But it's the truth that changes people, not the tunes. Mm -hmm. So that leads into a second thing. You, you know, if I'm picking the songs for a group, I want to pick songs that have truth in them. I want to pick songs that talk about who Jesus is and what he's done and why it matters. You know, why it makes a difference. I want that word of Christ dwelling in them richly so that when they leave, they love Jesus more than when they came in. And they know why they love him. Mm. You know, it's not just, oh, Jesus, he's so cool. 
No, no, it's a little more than that. Jesus is the son of God who humbled himself by becoming like us and became obedient to death, even death on a cross and rose from the dead. Now he's exalted, given the name above every name. Oh yeah, he's a little more than cool. He's He's the Lord. He's your savior. And you, what a privilege it is to sing to him. And that's what I, don't, that's what I want people leaving with. That's awesome. So make the congregation a priority. Make the words you sing a priority. And don't forget Psalm 34, 5. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces will never be ashamed. Mm. You ever show a video of your leading? You ever see a video of your leading? You probably do with live stream. You can probably go back and watch what you do. <laughs> it's really painful. <laughs> but at least you can see, am I looking to the Lord or am I looking to something else? Am I looking to what the next chords are? Am I looking to what the lyrics are? Am I looking to how am I doing? Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces will never be ashamed. So that's what I tell our instrumentalists. And always encourage our instrumentalists to sing. So if you play bass, you know, drums, guitar, whatever it is, I just say, look, sing as much as you can. Because that's going to tell people, one, that you're getting off more than the music. You're, you're getting off on the words, on the truths. And then it's just going to inspire you and help you know better what to play. You play differently when you sing. And you play in such a way that supports the singing, which is what you should be doing in the first place. But sometimes it's hard to realize that when you're not singing. Wow. So yeah. those are some of the, and have fun when you're doing it. Have fun <laughs> for crying out loud. Don't just get up there and like be stiff. You know, just enjoy because. We're singing to the God who made us and redeemed us. It should be a really joyful event. Oh, that is awesome. I'm sure. Uh, well, one more thing from your wealth of experience. We are talking about uh, teams and teamwork. <laughs> um, you know, working with a team is like, uh, it's a real test of your faith. Um, it can be. I'd say the biggest thing to realize is that your biggest challenge is what's in your own heart and not the people around you. So like if someone, assuming that you all aren't like perfect and that you don't have these like just perfect relationships that sometimes there's going to be a little turmoil. <laughs> a lot of that comes from our own hearts. Comparison. We want to be better than someone else. Where, you know, we say we're insecure, but really we just want to look good and we're afraid we're not going to look good. So that makes us feel insecure. Um, deal with your own heart first. And I'd say, you know, work on having a, a culture of encouragement where you're looking for evidences of God's grace in those around you. So when you get together, rehearse or sing or practice, look for things in other people that you can encourage. Oh, I really like the way that sounded. Oh, I really like that harmony. Oh, I really like what you played there. You know, it could be even thanks for being on time. You know, thanks for being faithful. Thanks for making it easy to do what we do. It might be something like thanks for not playing there, <laughs> you know, so that someone else can be heard. I mean, just, just look for things in other people that are signs that God is working. It's really helpful in taking your eyes off yourself because that's what we tend to do. We tend to just think about how are we doing? What do we look like? How do we sound? And guys, when we do that, we're just wanting to receive the glory that God should get. <laughs> and we're up there to give glory to Jesus, but we're wanting some of it. Um, so being being grateful for the God's grace and other people can be a real help to that. Encourage people when you can, whenever you can, be grateful for them. And then seek to, to be the best you can at what you do. You know, be humble and receiving other people's feedback. We have a time every Sunday in some form or another where we just, you know, we talk about what we did. And I've tried to make it a time that people can give corrective and, you know, critique without it being this big deal. So if like you've sung one morning and someone comes up to you and says, yeah, I wasn't sure that part you sang on uh, like the second verse of the second song was like really there. <laughs> You know, you should be able to laugh it off and go, yeah, you're right. I had no idea what I was doing. Or you should say, oh, really? Oh, man, can you help me with that? You know, just be humble. Uh, David says, Psalm 131, Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. And that's what we want to be. We, we don't want to always be thinking, oh, I got to be the best. I got to look the best. I got to sound the best. Because if you do, you will be resistant every time someone comes up and it tries to offer you some critique.
But that'll be a lot easier if you've built a culture of encouragement. Here we are, Lord, here to worship. Worship you with our hearts wide open.